I'd like to invite everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. December 21st. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes? So have second. a motion and a second. Any discussion on the minutes of December 21st? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Financial report and payment of the bills. We have a motion to approve the financial report. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Lou, you are up. You've got a couple things, I think. The uh, first thing is the uh, proclamation 1 2023, the first proclamation of this year to the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. A proclamation of the Mayor and Commission of the Town of Elk in recognition of the 94th birthday of the late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who was born January 15, 1929. Whereas Rice Amy Church Host of a prayer breakfast commemorating Dr. King's birthday on the third Monday of January from 1970, 2018. Wow. Whereas due to the increased participation in this event, Five Rivers Church graciously opened its doors in 2019, the 30th year of this important event. Whereas in 2020 and 2021, the COVID pandemic prohibited in-person gatherings required virtual participation to reflect on Dr. King's teaching of nonviolent protest <clears throat> against racial bigotry discrimination. And whereas in 2023 we will come together to reflect on Dr. King's message that freedom, justice, and equality are precious gifts for all people. Now therefore on behalf of the Board of Commissioners of the Town of Elton and the citizens of our community we hereby present this special recognition of the 94th birthday of the late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Thank you. Do we have a motion to accept Proclamation 01 2023? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion on the proclamation? Only one thing I'd like to say is that that's, uh, uh, that's a good way to open the meeting with that proclamation. Rub it all throughout the net. Well written too. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Next item I have is a public works agreement for Sheets Incorporated. The um, Sheets Convenience Store Company uh, that has a convenience store and gas station and everything. They're going to um, develop the property at um, soon to be addressed 622 East Pulaski Highway. That property was owned by Vital, the U.S. operations, and was sold to uh, the holding company uh, on uh, December 30th, uh, 2000, I'm sorry, December 9th, they sold it to PTMLP, a limited partnership, Delaware Corporation, for the chief to be located there. Actually, they cost two million. $25,000 for that four acre piece of, of property. And uh, this is a public works agreement that provides for water connections and, and a sewer connection for this uh, development to occur. So I would recommend that the board authorize a public works agreement with Sheets Inc. in order for them to proceed with the development of this property. We have a motion to accept the public works agreement with Sheets on this parcel. I'll second. We've got a motion and a second. You know, it's uh, we were all pretty excited when Lytle first acquired that property, and we really thought that we were going to have a, 
uh, another supermarket uh, in town that was supposed to be the first Lytle in the country. And of course, now there's hundreds of Lytles across the country, and uh, they've got their distribution center um, between Northeast and Perryville, and uh, we never got the Lytle. But uh, I think that uh, if anyone's ever stopped in the Sheets, they're going to be really impressed uh, with Sheets. Very nice business, uh, very similar to, uh, I, I would say similar to, but different than Wawa and Rural Farms. They're definitely different. You'll find more of these uh, as soon as you go across to, uh, uh, into Virginia, into West Virginia. So I'm not even sure if I've seen enough sheets in this immediate area. No, I can't, I I can't, can't down so, south. Yeah, I can't really place one. So <clears throat> who knows, we may have the first sheets. Uh, so that's my comments. We had a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. An interesting aspect of this project is the deed from Lytle to uh, the holding company, uh, PDM, that for 15 years that property cannot be used for a grocery store and they uh, hmm. stipulated that 5,000 uh, square feet could not be dedicated to the sale of different types of foods and everything. The only exception to this 15-year uh, limited clause is what Sheets is doing. Mm -hmm. So they, they negotiate, I guess, and now that. But I remember way back when they were going to prohibit any other grocery store in a competitive nature, you know, competitive nature. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's the story on the Sheets. Okay, the next uh, item I have is a public works agreement with uh, Southfields of Elton Capital Development, LLC. This is basically, they have two lots, three and four, I think that's a 46 acre, something like that. Uh, and they want to tie into the sewer line on uh, Whitehall Road. So uh, this, this uh, public works agreement allows for that construction of that uh, sewer line for that uh, development of those two lots out there. So I would recommend that the town enter into an agreement with Southfield Development Capital Development LLC for the development of these uh, lots three and four for sewer construction. We have a motion to accept the public works agreement with Southfields of Elton Capital Development LLC on these uh, two parcels or two lots. Two, yeah, two lots. Two lots. So second. Moved. second. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion on this at all? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. That's all I have. All righty. Thank you, Lou. All right. Uh, well, I just wish that, uh, I hope that everyone had a fantastic uh, Merry Christmas and a, and a Happy New Year. We hadn't met since, uh, since uh, the holidays. Uh, myself, personally, it couldn't have went better. I had the uh, uh, three kids in town. I had the grandkids in town. So it was a, a wonderful time for me. And I was uh, very happy, but I was also very happy on the record that they all went back to their own little nest. <laughs> so it was pretty good. Uh, Emily, Shelby, and Robbie, I hope you're not watching this video. <laughs> uh, it was always, it always uh, was pretty good. Uh, one other thing that we talked about, and I see Mr. Dean here from Waste Management, one of the things that uh, we had at the last meeting, uh, we tabled the decision to move forward with that. I still need another week to make a decision on that. From my standpoint, I don't know how the rest of the board feels. I still need to get a little bit of feedback from uh, Public Works. Uh, and I wanted to see how we made out through the Christmas holidays, and I haven't seen any of that information. Can so, you share that with when you do? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. You guys saw it with that, or did you? All right, thank you. So, just wanted to let you know it'll be uh, Hopefully next meeting we'll make some type of decision for you. But I do want to find out how we made out over the holidays because that was very crucial. Okay, I think that's all I had to report. Jean, you're the first up. I, I, I just want to wish everybody a Happy New Year. I'm looking forward to it being uh, productive and uh, blessed for all of us. Thank you. Charles? I'm good. Thanks to see everybody. I have a, a virus to the doctor today. I'm okay, but um, it's two or two weeks, Jane. I can hear you. Yeah. I mean, they gave me the wrong time the first time, but anyhow. Uh, 
they gave me a number. Um, in the houses, I don't want to talk much. I remember the house. South Hill? South Hill, but I don't know if they offer anything that I do. I have a question for you, but I'm voiced. Mm -hmm. the, 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 um, what did I say about the houses? Approvals? No. So, so Commissioner Gibbons, before he lost his voice, he was, and it's great, Ryan, that you're here. Maybe we can uh, lean on you for a couple questions. Uh, Commissioner Gibbons had some friends of his that came in from New England, and they had heard about the Southfields project, and I think they had some interest in some of the housing. Uh, what commission do you charge? There you go. <laughs> so, where, where? I, I know that nothing has been final approved on the housing, but what are you speculating at this point? And I'm, I, I, I get, in, in terms of timing or yeah, pricing what you, or what? Yeah, I would say that uh, uh, in a ballpark, would we start, if everything goes accordingly to plan for your team, yeah, would you say that we would start construction in the spring? We're looking to start construction of the boulevard in uh, March or April. Yeah. So assuming all the public works agreements get executed quickly and we don't have any weather delays, that would at least allow, uh, once DR Horton has all of their approvals in place, which they're lagging a little behind our infrastructure approvals, mm -hmm. but once those are all uh, finalized, they would have access to, site, access to the site to start moving dirt probably in the spring. All right, good. Good. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you thinking about moving they out? They have there? access in the fall. These people. No. <laughs> what did you say again in the fall? I'm, I'm sorry. That we have access in the spring. They would have access in the fall. Yeah. Very good. Anything else? Um, but also, if you'd like to pass along the names and everything, the home builders have extensive wait lists and things, and they could be the first to know. So I'll come up afterwards and give you. Okay. Give us an update. Yeah. yeah. Earl. Um, yeah, welcome back everybody. I um, want to bring up uh, everybody up to par with the um, Parks and Rec update for 2023. Um, their program for the winter uh, includes programs for toddlers, soccer and basketball clinics, arts and crafts classes, cooking, and youth uh, canvas painting, crafts, designs, and a senior canvas uh, painting classes. The crafts and bingo dances, you know, the, for the seniors, they offer a lot of programs for the seniors this year. Um, dances, over 20 classes each week. Um, open gym basketball, open gym volleyball, and the uh, youth basketball league is over 200 uh, kids registered. Our weekend program, uh, many uh, weekend nights are busy with the numbers of rental for uh, birthday parties and baby showers, so they have them booked. Uh, we also welcome the Judy Center uh, Playground twice a week, the infant and toddler programs as needed, and the senior exercise classes. Um, line dancing offered uh, by the Cecil County Healthy um, Options program for the seniors twice a week. Um, the uh, kinship uh, support group with the Cecil County Department of Social Service and after school programs uh, which is ran by the Boys and Girls Club every day after school. Um, installation of the new playground, which we're, we're going to be um, placing over here at the center, at the community center, will begin in the next uh, couple weeks. Um, some installation work, uh, fencing, laying out the site, has already uh, been completed, and the playground is being funded um, by a $240,000 grant from the Community Parks and um, Playground Grant Program. We are continuing to work with the community organized uh, organizations to provide services to our residents and we'll continue to expand our programs offering to meet the needs of the community. And I'm saying that uh, Mary and her staff are doing a great job over there. Um, so let's give them a round of applause for the work that's being done. Right. Right. Um, I was gonna, I, I know there was a, comment about the Happy 40 Progress, uh, um, the Happy 40 um, site, and there was questions about the demolishing of the building, and that's, I think there was an email sent to, to the group, um, or at least to me. Um, that's, I know Chip's not here, I, mean, I know I'm not really looking for an answer from him, but that still is on the 
the uh, books to be knocked down. I, I understand, right? Yes, and I just asked him to unmute. He is um, on the computer virtually, so I asked him to unmute. Chip, can you give us any update on the Happy 40 demolition? Yes, they had it uh, tested for asbestos, which you have to do prior to demolition. And I spoke with the company that did the testing yesterday. Um, the only details he can provide me is that there is asbestos in there, and the owner was notified. Uh, I sent an email to the owner yesterday for an update. He has not gotten back to me. Um, so I will uh, keep trying to get a hold of him and see what his you know, plans are, but that's where it's at right now. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Chip. And then one other thing. I, I see Mike's here. I'm not, I didn't know he was going to be here. But how are we doing with the... Uh, uh, for my last meeting, um, I, meeting I, I was in. Or well, I was going to invite him up if he had anything to say at the end of the okay, public that, comments. That's all my thing to see how, how we're doing with that. If there's any progress, and I want to commend uh, Patrick Lynn, uh, my wife and I, and my daughter went out the day before um, uh, New Year's. <laughs> right. The place was jam packed. I mean, we almost had to park on the streets that were driving in, but. Uh, that was, that was very good to see that over there. Now, nice. they were really excited here. I'm not advertising for you, but the menu was great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and um, so we were super up. And, and so it's funny because uh, a couple of days later, after New Year's, we went out there and the same thing was back again. So yeah. you guys, whatever you're doing today, there's a great just the atmosphere just to look and see what's going on. And if it, anybody hasn't been out there, I, uh, I recommend you back there and at least see what's in the community because it's it's really a good plus for the whole development res, residential area and everything so appreciate that okay. and kudos to you that's it can i ask her a question yeah about uh, the senior events at the community center um that sounds really good now yeah, i'm not that age, at that age yet but okay yeah i know they're not for you yet <laughs> but um how how are we going to get that word out because it's Don't on, we have a booklet coming it, out in January? Yes, yeah, but I think it's on their website, mm -hmm. and also on um, not just on their website. I think they have flyers and stuff over there to hand out at, after the class. But I can double check, and make sure that they're doing. I'm that. just wondering, because yeah. um, I mean, I know a lot of people that have applied to, but they're they're certainly not aware of, of um, opportunities they might have there. Okay. So, I'll, I'll mention it to her. I was just wondering, um, maybe they'll have a dedicated uh, page or something in the booklet. Okay. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Robert? Do we utilize uh, social media to the fullest extent for putting information out like that? Because that's the way of today. It is. And, and to answer your question, I think we could do better on social media. Uh, quite frankly, uh, uh, you see other communities hitting the Instagram, the Twitter, mm -hmm. the the uh, and but really we've never, quite frankly, uh, to defend everyone in here, we've never trained anyone on social media, and we probably should. Maybe it's something we do. I know the chief does a great job with her yeah. her group. Each department doesn't um, you know like the parks and rec. They don't have a designated person. I, I, handle that. I I think that they do, but I don't I don't think it's uh, they're they're hit it. I mean I'm friends with Parks and Rec, and I don't see a lot of activity, but that would be the way to uh, get that message out a little bit. I like how the police department does it. Um, even like even with uh, you know somebody's wanted, or just putting out a nice public service announcement, you know, I think it's fantastic. Yeah, that's those extra duties that I've assigned. Okay, <laughs> well. So we don't actually have, you know, designated staff. Tracy does it and then Larry does it as a backup. It's wonderful. And they did attend, um, like, some online training for them for Facebook. And Can we borrow Larry <laughs> and see if we could, he could so, help yeah. out. Maybe Larry could help out with all of this. Yeah, could sure you put it in his ear? I think that that would be a good play. Then we'll have a little workshop and figure out the ins and outs. But I think it would be. Because you can even schedule them to come out like on the weekend or the holiday or something like oh, that. Wow. So okay. you don't have to do it right then. But we even, we haven't even branched out into Twitter and Instagram and things like that either. I know that we need to, but um, we 
Yeah, but Facebook alone is wonderful. Yeah, it has been really good. Working yeah, good. They've really increased our, our viewers. Mm -hmm. You've done a great job with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I'd just like to welcome everybody to 2023. And guys, I'm glad you could all make it. Uh, I expect that this is going to be a year that's going to go down in history as one of Elkton's most interesting and profitable years. It's, it's going to be a really good year, and I'm glad to be part of it. That's all I have. Thank you. Well, this is the, uh, well, I guess the one thing to add, I, I, I know that we have a, a few folks in the audience here and, and uh, really appreciate you coming. I don't know if there's anything you need to add. I think, Ryan, we're going to start meeting on the third Wednesday prior to the meeting. If there's any, uh, just to keep the ball moving forward, right? And Mike, I guess I could ask you a quick question. How are we looking on the feasibility study? Still on track. Still uh, on January track. January 16th, we'll have it. Uh, everything is good. We're working with them several times a week to make sure we're sharing information, and so they have a, a solid understanding of um, the uh, the tournaments and the, the revenue generation and and all of the uh, the our ability to to make payments on the debt service uh, as it would be funded. So. Uh, so far, we're getting nothing but great feedback. We're looking nice. forward to it. Um, so, yeah, so far, so good. Is there anything you guys need to add? <clears throat> yeah, Mike, did you just say, uh, is there a projected date to get this study back? January 16th. The 16th. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not sure if, there, if you guys have had any movement on the, uh, the rating, bond rating. I know I've, I've been here a couple of times and, and brought it up. I haven't heard anything one way or the other. So okay. if there's no updates right now, that's fine. But I don't know of any from your guys' side either. I, I think we'll have uh, some better answers when we meet prior to. Great. Thank you. But thanks, you guys, for coming. Uh, anyone else have anything for the good of the town of Elton? Chief. I just wanted to share with you guys I got notified yesterday that um, our very own Senior Officer Brian David um, was selected and awarded first place at the district level for the Veterans of Foreign Wares Public Servant Award Citation. Oh, oh congratulations. Yeah. So That's fantastic was... news. Chief, can I get a copy of that? Sure. I, I want to advertise that, please. Yep. What are we going to do for him? We're going to make him the social him media guy. Really? He something about a cash award at a dinner. So. Oh, nice. He's good. good. <laughs> he was surprised. He didn't know we had nominated him. And so he came in yesterday and he's like, gee, I might make a mistake. <laughs> Real hate. Nice. So we were all excited about there. Very nice. All right. You hearing nothing? Meeting adjourned. Almost as fast as Charles. Oh, wow. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Meeting's not adjourned. I see. Matt Holt. No, Pat, call. <laughs> What's wrong with me? <laughs> Pat, you're on. Can you unmute Pat? Let's oh, see what okay. we got. Yeah, I, all right, I have it unmuted now. Now, I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what waste management is doing. Are they going to be re doing recycling? Are they going to keep putting it all in one truck? You know, what are they doing? Well, you're, you're asking some very good questions, and uh, I see Mr. Bean has left, and, and Dan from Public Works is in here right now. But, Pat, I think we all feel kind of how you are. I've been asked, it looks like to me, that they've been putting trash and recycling in the same truck, but then I was told some of the trucks have the ability to collect both. So you can't, you can't uh, judge the truck by its cover because it can take recycling and it can take trash. Our problem is, is that I don't believe that the recycling that we're collecting as a town, I'm going to share with you my opinion, is that uh, I don't think we're getting the, the, the bang for the buck. Uh, I think it makes us feel good that we're recycling. I think it's a great thing that we're recycling. But we get so much contaminated recycling because I don't think people really understand how to recycle. And I think what happens is we got to pay the normal dump fees. If you uh, recycle properly, it can save the town about 70% on the dumping fees. So one thing that uh, we might suggest when we get into the next contract is that maybe we only recycle plastic milk jugs, plastic water bottles, plastic laundry detergent containers. Keep it simple for a while until we can get to that next step, and I think we can save some fees. But I don't know if that answers your question or not, but uh, I have to tell you, it's been, 
it, it hasn't been the, the best experience. So uh, you were saying that they're, they're telling you that their trucks are capable of, one truck is capable of separating I, recycling from normal trash. But what I see happening is people have two cans out, one for recycle, one for regular trash. Yep. And when they take them out of the out of the trash can, they're in bags, and they just throw them all in the back of the truck. So I don't see how a truck can look through a bag and separate from I, recycling. I, I would agree with your comment, and I, and I can't answer that. I, I, can't I, answer. Think, I think one thing that will help on that, I know they want to do everything on one day, but they're going to have to have separate days for that recycling in order to start that off because that's the only way you're going to identify the separate trucks. Uh -huh. It's a different day. You're not supposed to put recycling in bags. You can't, you can't bag recycling material because they can't uh, machine it it jams up. So, they, it so did you hear that, Pat? So, and, and so what was, and, and it's a very good comment. I know that, uh, and once again, it's uh, for us to understand how to recycle better is that if your recyclables are in a trash bag, that's considered regular trash for them. So if you do see them taking bags and throwing it in the truck, it makes sense that they think it's regular trash, not recyclables. Okay. Thank you, but we'll try to, we'll try our, we'll, we're gonna have multiple meetings over the next couple of months with waste management. And that's where- I do think it worked out better when they came around on two separate days. Well, that's what the, the Commissioner Piner was just And some, some people, when they put their recycles coming from the kitchen or whatever, it's in a bag, and they're dumping it out into the, the containers, but they're not really, I didn't know about not having it in the bag, recyclables, but the tr trouble is, once they take it out of their regular kitchen or whatever and put it in that can, it's, then they become the trash man. They gotta separate that and put it in the trash can, and it's, that's why people are not doing it. That's, well, I know that's I know that. for them. It absolutely is, and, and uh, I think we're doing the right thing by moving forward with recycling, but it's, uh, I would almost challenge to say that the recycling, we're not saving, the town of Elton is not saving money by recycling. I can say, I can tell you that. It's actually costing. It's costing us money. Yeah. Yes. A recycling dumpster. And that might, and, and Commissioner Piner made a good point. Maybe we have to go back to the recycling dumpsters around town and have people actually if they want to recycle, they take their recyclables to the dumpster rather than have it on the street. But those are things we're going to work out. Thanks, Pat. Anyone else have anything to say? Meeting adjourned.